When you give each man a free choice, you run the risk of wide disagreement. Fine. Harry Emerson Fosdick said it well. Liberty is always dangerous, but it's the safest thing we have. President Trump's claim that the 2020 election was stolen undermines fundamental beliefs about democracy. It is corroding the legitimacy of U.S. institutions and has exacerbated political polarization. Should American democratic institutions and trust in them continue to decline, sustaining global democracy in the rules-based international order will be extremely difficult. Should he return to the White House in 2024, there will be even greater opportunity for Trump to consolidate power, either through crisis, real or manufactured, or by encouraging civil violence. So look, the big lie is kind of at the heart of the crisis, right? And I, I emphasize this in the article. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, I call it a poison that is now circulating within the body politic of, uh, of the United States. Um, it's an idea that if, if it's widely accepted, makes dem democracy impossible because it means that, you know, if, if we're talking about 70% of the Republicans, 30 to 40% of the electorate believe that the that, uh, election was stolen, Biden is an illegitimate president, which means those people, if they really do believe this, are not going to be prepared to accept the result of any future election unless they win. Uh, that, that, as I point out in the article, there are certain foundational beliefs for democracy. Uh, and, and one is that if you lose the election, you, you hand over power to the people who won. Uh, it, another is that everybody is equal as citizens in, in the society and has an equal right to make to participate in the decisions about the, uh, the direction of the society. Uh, now, the big lie is, is, is poisonous for, in part for a reason that's not been widely recognized. It, it, it establishes a boundary between real Americans and, and people who aren't really Americans, aren't true Americans, aren't true patriots. Because if there's a whole bunch of people who are prepared to steal the election, then they've put themselves outside the moral community of America. And, and uh, so they don't need to be part of any future democratic process because they've already proven that, that they are not patriots, that they're not real Americans, that they're outside the moral, moral community. And as I point out in my article, that's only a couple of steps away from the kind of psychological dynamics of dehumanization that have led to some of the worst violence in human history, right? So, so that's, it, it's diabolically dangerous, the big lie. Uh, it, 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 it corrodes, automatically corrodes the legitimacy of American institutions, of democratic institutions. It establishes, uh, it establishes divisions between who's, who is appropriately part of the moral community and who is not, who can appropriately be part of the democratic process and who not. It, and it establishes in, in the eyes of, of, of believers that there's a kind of Manichaean conflict between good and evil here, and that anything is justified to win. The United States is the, arguably the oldest democracy in the world, and, uh, uh, and symbolically important, enormously important, as really the remaining superpower in the world. I mean, in China is a superpower, I suppose, but the United States is still the wealthiest in terms of its aggregate GDP and the most powerful by far country in the world. Uh, if it flips to a, an authoritarian regime, it's gonna be very difficult to sustain democracy in, any, in, in other countries in the world. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a rear guard fight on the part of the other democracies in the world. If the United States withdraws from NATO, withdraws from the international, regimes that maintain international rule of law, the United Nations system, uh, it's going to be much closer to all out anarchy at the international level using the concept that international relations theorists would use, which means that it becomes a self-help system for all of the other nations in the world. They have to look out for themselves. And it's very difficult for democracies to sustain themselves in that environment because there's so much danger and fear that, that, that it will, there'll be increasing pressure for all of the societies to shift towards authoritarianism. So this is of extraordinary importance for the whole world, which is one reason I think my piece actually 
it, it went viral around the world in a way I didn't expect, but I think it was, it, 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 it called attention to a challenge that's not just for the United States. We've always recognized that Trump was going to be bad news for the world, but, but that it's now time for the remaining democracies to pull together and figure out what we're gonna do if this bad outcome really does come to pass in the United States. And I, I, let's be clear, as Michelle Goldberg has said in the New York Times, if Trump wins the next election, it's very unlikely that there's gonna be another democratic president in the future.